I'm the Octagon, and while most people today would associate cruise ships with cool-looking interiors, overcrowded exteriors, and tax evasion, but for the Venezuelan Navy, this served more as a reminder of their absolute clownery that led to one of the most ridiculous naval accidents to ever happen in history, made even better by the aftermath that followed it. So today, let's take a look at the absurd events that led to the sinking of a Venezuelan patrol boat at the hands of a cruise ship. It all happened on the 30th of March 2020, around midnight, when this cruise ship called the RCGS Resolute was undergoing some routine engine maintenance about 13 nautical miles north of La Tortuga Island of Venezuela before it was to continue to Curaçao. The cruise ship at that time only had 32 crewmen on board, just minding their own business, when they were spotted by a Venezuelan patrol boat called the Naihuata. The patrol boat asked the Resolute's crew what they were doing. The Resolute responds, but the Venezuelans for some reason did not believe in the Resolute Resolute's midnight engine tinkering, and instead accused them of violating Venezuela's territorial waters. The patrol boat then ordered the cruise ship to follow it to the eastern side of Isla de Margarita, which I looked up does in fact have a lot of margaritas, as well as an entire Wikipedia section just for all the crime on the island. Naturally, the Resolute refused to tag along because they wanted to go this way, not that way. But more importantly, they were in international waters, not Venezuelan. The Resolute's crew, however, wasn't all too keen on being involved in any unnecessary sea shenanigans and so decided to confirm with their ship owners before complying with the Venezuelans. But while the Resolute's captain was explaining the situation on the phone, the Naihuata didn't really like the Resolute just completely ghosting them and not replying to any of their texts or something. And so as a natural course of action, they just decided to fire some warning shots at the cruise ship but they still got no response. So they were like, all right, man, these corporate validation seekers need to be taught some other way. And I've thought of the perfect plan. What's that? What does the Taliban do after they've captured a country? Uh, suppress women rights? Nope. Then what? bumper cars. And so the Naihuata starts its engines, approaches the Resolute at full speed, and just straight up rams itself into the Resolute starboard side repeatedly. Why? Because their plan was to literally force the ship into Venezuelan territory. But they forgot one important thing. When it comes to naval battles, then size does matter. Don't be fooled by this image. This is just my artistic impression. The Resolute is about 124.8 meters and weighs 8,400 tons. The Naihuata in comparison is just 80 meters long and weighs 1,800 tons. Here's me at 5 foot 5 to give you a rough comparison. Also, the Resolute's reinforced hull can even withstand icebergs, so a patrol boat collides with it is neither gonna damage the ship nor win them any Oscars 85 years later. And just a few moments later, the Naihuata's hull just cracks open and it begins to fill with water. The Resolute on the other hand, just like your crush, was completely unaffected by the constant attempts made to smash her. The Resolute's crew, however, seeing the Naihuata descend into Davy Jones's locker were like, alright, since these glue sniffers are gonna make the headlines tomorrow, it'll probably also give us a bad rip if we just cruise our way out of here and something terrible happens to these military geniuses near their own country. So they contacted the Maritime Rescue Coordination Center in Curaçao and let them know about the situation. And after everything that happened, they still tried to contact the Naihuata and offered to rescue them. But it was the patrol boat that goes to them this time and didn't respond back. The Resolute though still stuck around for an hour before the MRCC gave it clearance to skedaddle. And shortly after, the Venezuelan Navy arrived just in time to rescue all the 44 crewmen of the Naihuata. Yeah, there were 44 of them on board. Fortunately, all of them made it out and nobody died or was injured during the entire incident. As for the Resolute, it just had a few scratches that looked like they could be fixed with a few minutes in Photoshop. Now you might think that the Venezuelan government would have at least given our big brain boat bashers a good spanking, but they not only sided with them, but instead accused the Resolute's crew of piracy and terrorism. I'm not joking, this is real. The Venezuelan defense minister Vladimir Padrino Lopez accused the Resolute of imperial aggression and the president Nicolas Maduro claimed that the Resolute was quote carrying mercenaries to attack onshore military bases because you know a cruise ship with no passengers operated by a private company undergoing maintenance outside Venezuelan territory is just the perfect way to launch a full-scale invasion of a country and overthrow the government. All the accusations of course had absolutely no evidence to back them up. Even the rescued crew of the Naihuata didn't give any details of the incident for some reason but that didn't stop the Venezuelan 
people and government from suing everyone involved with the Resolute for a total of $425 million, which as far as I know, that went nowhere. In the end, the Resolute is still in operation, though under a different name. The Naihuata went down in history, both literally and figuratively. Venezuela's naval reputation sank harder than their economy, and the closest I've personally ever been on a cruise ship was watching Hotel Transylvania 3. But as for now, I'm the Octagon, and I hope James Cameron would give me some credit in 82 years. Why won't you die? Nano machine, son.